For me, carving is really a lifestyle rather than just a, just a job that I come into, you know, nine to five. I always look forward to coming into the workshop and I'm always thinking about the project or piece that I'm working on because it requires your full attention to do it justice. I love walking into work and lucky enough that there's a beautiful woodland path, it's about a 15, 20 minute walk and it's really inspiring to kind of walk through the trees and get that sense of nature just before I come into work. My love of woodworking started from quite a young age. Um, my mum is very artistic and my dad very practical. So I grew up in quite a creative environment. My dad took me on a, a wood turning course when I was about 10 and woodworking stayed with me as a hobby until my mid-twenties when I took a bit of a leap of faith and decided to train and become a full-time woodcarver. One of the first carvings that I made was a small flower with a little tea light candle in the middle and it was for my girlfriend and I was struggling to figure out what to give her for her birthday and so I was at home and I picked up a carpenter's chisel and a block of wood from my dad's workshop and just started cutting out this flower and suddenly realised that I just loved the process of carving and just went from there really. My name is William Barsley, I'm a traditional woodcarver based in Dartington, down in Devon. So the piece I'm about to make is for a client based in New Zealand who's got in touch wanting me to carve their coat of arms. They've been granted this arms by the Royal College of Arms, so I've got a set design to work to. And they would like this piece roughly 13 inches high and fully painted and gilded. I really enjoy carving coats of arms and heraldry because they're so personal for the client. The nature of a coat of arms is that it's specific to the individual and so it's a very personal project and there's a lot of symbolism and meaning within a coat of arms and I really like that connection um, with the client and then also the piece itself. It, it is by nature a one-off piece so I would have never carved it before and that's quite exciting. I have to figure out how to carve it as I'm going along and, and designing it. The next step of the process is to draw out the design and transfer this onto the timber, so the timber needs to be appropriate for, for the job. Often in coats of arms, the pieces are painted and gilded, because color is really important in heraldry. And so I'd use a wood such as lime wood or American basswood, which is soft, easy to carve, but holds its strength. But it's quite a plain wood, but in heraldry it's gonna be painted, so you won't actually end up seeing the, the timber. If it wasn't going to be painted, I'd use something with a bit more character, so kind of oak or chestnut, um, just because the wood is going to be on show 
and you wanted to have a bit of depth and character within that. After I've finished drawing on the design, I would then bandsaw out the profile. So I'd cut out the profile of the, of the piece. And this really helps to get the, the rough shape of what the piece is that I'm making. After I've bandsawed out the general profile, I will clamp down the piece or do what's called a paper joint onto a, a bit of ply. And it's a case of roughing out the, the piece, so trying to get to the, the finished depths. And it's often quite an investigative process where you're discovering the depths and layers and you're kind of doing a little bit here, doing a little bit there and just trying to get to those finished depths. One of the things I enjoy about wood carving is the meditative state that you can get into. Not always, but there's stages where you find this perfect kind of balance with it and you're completely absorbed into the process of carving and all the kind of noise of daily life just disappears and you're just focused on the block of wood and the chisel and kind of it cutting through um, that piece of wood and the kind of crisp noise that it makes and it, it, it requires your full attention because if, if you don't have it then um, you might slip or make a mistake and so you kind of have to be focused and you're also focusing on such a small point so it's such a tiny little area of life in a way, you know, that one little bit on the wood, whereas, you know, everything else in life is so, can be so complicated and complex and it's so big that really your, your focus is just down on this tiny little area. And that's quite nice. I quite enjoy that sometimes. My path to becoming a professional woodcarver took quite a long time. I left school not really knowing what I wanted to do or be in life and I found that quite a, a large question to try and figure out. I did then end up going to university and studying international development and I ended up working for a branch of the United Nations down in Rome. Although I really loved it, it didn't quite satisfy my creative needs and kind of using my hands and I was still carving as a hobby alongside this. I decided to take a bit of a leap of faith and leave the UN and set off travelling the world documenting carvers. Whilst on the journey documenting carving around the world. I would often ask carvers about their own tradition of carving in their country and when they asked me the same question back about what's English wood carving like, I didn't really know or have an answer for them because I'd never actually kind of properly studied it and so I had a quick search online and found there was a course in traditional wood carving and gilding in London. So I decided to enrol whilst I was away and then I came back and that September started to learn to become a woodcarver. It was the course, or doing that course, which turned my carving hobby into a profession, essentially. So that gave me the skills to then take it on and become a, a professional woodcarver. So it was, it was invaluable.
If the piece is then going to be painted or gilded, I then apply layers of white gesso, uh, which I'll then paint onto. And we also do a lot of gilding. So in coats of arms, there's often the silver helm, which I'd use palladium for, so palladium leaf. And there's a lot of gold. So we'd use 23 and a half carat gold on the coats of arms. And that's using the traditional methods to do that, which I was trained to do. I'm always inspired by the work of old carvers. So for example, medieval carvers is, is one of my favorite styles. And what stands out is just how creative they were sometimes, but also the quality of it. It was just, it's just amazing. And knowing that they were producing these works hundreds of years ago in a very same way as I am now. So I don't use any power tools, it's all hand carved. And there's not too much disconnecting between me and a medieval woodcarver but just their attention to detail and the quality inspires me and really drives me on so trying to produce work that is of a high quality and the best I can produce and looking to always progress and get better so knowing that there's always areas to improve and that will be a lifelong journey you know, that you'll, you'll never fully master it. It's, it's something that you keep progressing and learning and there's so many different aspects to wood carving that I find quite exciting. It took me years to find wood carving and to settle on something that I'm happy doing. And since choosing to become a professional woodcarver, I've found this huge sense of peace in that this is, this is what I do. And that's really satisfying, knowing I've found something that I enjoy. Luckily, it doesn't feel like work often, um, which is great and, and kind of very aware that's, that's quite a privileged position to be in with, with my work. At times it can be very tough, but it's given me a yeah, sense of purpose in my life and what I'm doing.